10 spot, we have items from Pompeii. Apparently over the years, it has become a sort of thing where people that have stolen from the ruins of Pompeii in Italy, they always end up returning what they stole. Apparently the site gets hundreds of packages of returned pieces and items with letters saying that this person has received terrible misfortune since taking this item, or this person has received terrible financial lows. So of course now the managers of the site warn the people to not take anything as they will be cursed for many years to come. It is unclear if the people that took the items continue to be cursed even after they return them, but honestly I suppose it depends on how long they plan to punish themselves mentally for doing something so ridiculous in the first place. In our number 9 spot we have the coffin shaped chests. There is a legend in New Orleans called the legend of the casket girls and when French women were sent to the city for marriage arrangements, it is said that these girls carried coffin shaped chests with their belongings. The chests were kept in the attic of a convent, but their belongings went missing. The nuns thought there was some demonic presence taking the belongings of these girls and so they had the chests nailed shut and then they locked the attic and it was later blessed by the Pope. Apparently in 1978, two reporters decided to put this legend to the test and they broke into the attic. Apparently they were found dead the next morning, their heads on the ground and they were drained of all of their blood. Wow. Yep, those chests were definitely cursed. In our number 8 spot we have the unlucky mummy. There is a mummy's case in the British Museum that is known to be cursed. Not the mummy, but the case. The case and mummy are from 950 to 900 BC and it became known as the unlucky mummy due to the many stories surrounding it that has been believed to have caused a lot of misfortune. Apparently the four men that found the mummy at Thebes in the late 1800s all quickly passed away. Two through violent incidences and two died of poverty. People that have been associated with the mummy or have just touched the case have reported receiving illnesses, getting into accidents, and some have even passed away. There was once a wild rumor that it caused the sinking of the Titanic. One of the passengers was one of the first journalists to write about the curse and the case, and so it was believed that he was cursed and that led to the sinking. People even believed that the mummy's presence was on board of the ship. <laughs> Fascinating. In our number 7 spot we have the Haunted Ledger. There is a place called Preston Manor and it was once owned by a family called the Kent family who claimed that a book caused them to be plagued by ghosts. The ledger dates back to World War 1 and apparently it was found in a shop wall in Brighton and the worker that found it took it home. Not long after he and his daughter began to have visions of soldiers that had passed away as well as many other visions. His daughter was told that the book must be returned to Brighton by one of the spirits and so of course out of fear they gave it to Preston Manor. Many who have touched it have felt that it is haunted and it's advised not to touch it. In our number 6 spot we have the dark magic doll. This is a doll that people have made throughout history that is usually made to represent someone you want to inflict pain on, similar to a voodoo doll, and in this case you make the doll look like the person you're thinking of and then you hang it, and this is supposed to make the person you're thinking of get sick and then pass away. So yeah, this type of doll not only can possess you but also it could potentially take your life. Great. People throughout history have apparently made these dolls and there are quite a lot of people that believe in them. So who who knows if they work or not, but still something to be cautious of. In our number 5 spot we have the Great Bed of Ware. Apparently there is a bed that is cursed. Makes sense. Honestly, if there is any object that you know I would believe to be cursed, I would probably jump on board with the fact that it's probably a bed. Beds hold so much energy and if you're a little promiscuous then perhaps a few people have sat on your bed in your lifetime. Damn, that's a lot of energy. That might need clearing. So anyways, there is a bed called the Great Bed bed of Ware from the 15th century and it was formerly owned by King Edward IV. It was made by a carpenter called Jonas Fosbrook. It is said that after some time had passed the bed was actually donated to the poor 
and the poor mistreated the bed and covered it in graffiti. They say that Jonas Foss Brooks' ghost was very mad about this, and so he now attacks any commoner who sleeps in the bed that isn't, of course, of noble blood. In our number four spot, we have the Ouija board. This is a board throughout history that people know that they shouldn't mess around with, but people still do. There have been many reportings of possessions, dark messages, and dark energy when playing this game, and for that reason alone, people should stay away. Is it cursed? Arguably, yes, but it's more of a gamble. People never know who they are talking to and therefore they could be talking to a dark ghost and it could latch onto you, they say. Definitely not a good idea to play around with an object with that kind of energy. Whether you believe in it or not, best to be weary of what you don't know. In our number three spot, we have the devil's rocking chair. One night in 1980, a boy named David Gletzel woke up from his bed and claims that he had been visited by a man with big black eyes, a thin face, pointed teeth and ears, and he had horns. David reported many nightmares about a man that promised to take his soul, and he then began to claim that he was seeing the beast when he was awake. He would always see it rocking in a rocking chair in his house, and other family members would see this rocking chair rock back and forth, seemingly under its own power. After David got many exorcisms and improved, his sister's boyfriend, who was also staying in the house, started acting like David was, hissing a lot and speaking in different voices. This drove him to killing someone. After this, the rocking chair was donated to a museum. The museum then started to have some weird things happen to it. Doors started shutting on their own light switches would turn off, etc. In our number two spot, we have the Goddess of Death statue. This statue is kind of strange looking, and honestly, at first glance, you might think, is this not just any other historical artifact? How is this cursed? Well, the artifact was apparently made around 3,500 BC and then was found in 1878, and so it's had many lives and there is a lot of energy associated with it. Apparently of the families it's belonged to over the many years since 1878, each one has been torn apart and ended in death. Weirdly enough, within only six years, all seven members of the first family had all passed away. The same happened for its second owner after four years the whole family had died. After a third family owned it and two people passed away, they had the wisdom to donate the item to a museum. Smart. No one else needs to die because of a silly artifact. In our number one spot, we have the Annabelle doll. In the early 1970s, a college girl owned this doll as it was given to her as a gift. Her and her college roommate noticed that the doll would continuously move in their dorm. The doll at some point was believed to have killed a college student on another floor, having been found bloody with a note that said, help. And so after a failed exorcism by Ed and Lorraine Warren, the doll was put into a protection glass box and given to a museum in Connecticut. Yeah, best to never ever go near this doll. Kicking off the list at number 10, Pearls of Death. If you've seen Annabelle Comes Home, the first item on today's list should ring a familiar bell. The character Daniela in the film, she tries to communicate to a loved one beyond the grave. Now, in order to do so, she puts on the museum's mourning bracelet. That's a big no-no. Yeah, we don't touch things in haunted museums, my friends. Now, there isn't a mourning bracelet in the real occult museum, but there is such thing as the pearls of death. Those are very real. Those are also lovely, might I add. These pearls were added to the museum after a woman claimed they were strangling her as soon as she put them on. Yeah, the second this poor woman put these pearls on, she needed people around her to help yank the pearls from her neck. It felt like they were choking her to death. Yeah, these haunted pearls have nothing on Martha Wayne. Nothing. Number nine, cursed mirror. The amount of movies I watched growing up where the killer was in the reflection of the mirror and they close it nice and slowly, ah, so scary. Reflections are scary in horror movies and apparently in real life as well. There's a cursed mirror in the occult museum and its history is pretty haunting. The previous owner was a man in New Jersey and he liked to spend hours and hours every single night trying to beckon spirits through this mirror. He was desperately trying to contact loved ones that have passed away, which is tragic, but I don't think sitting in front of a mirror asking for spirits is best for your mental health. You know, there's other ways to cope. A few weeks passed and faces eventually did appear, haunting demonic faces, so terrifying that it sent the man into a mental institution. How sad is that? This type of conjuring is called crystalmancy. It's when a spirit possesses a shiny object, like a window, a mirror, a pocket watch, you name it. If it's shiny, chances are it's haunted. 
who knows? As I'm looking into the, re the reflection of this teleprompter, I'm like, uh, <laughs> oops. Number eight, werewolf paw. And Annabelle comes home, we see in the museum a werewolf paw sitting on a shelf. And then later on in the movie, we see a real werewolf outside of the Warrens' house. Now, this is most likely a nod to a London case involving the Warrens, where a man was behaving like a werewolf. Yeah, he would just flip like that and become one. Not physically or anything, he wouldn't grow hair or teeth, but he used his fingers like claws, and he would growl, and there'd be saliva dripping from his face, and of course, sadly, he attacked people on the streets of London, so it was the real deal. Everyone's calling everyone trying to figure this out. This man was William Ramsey, and the Warrens believed this to be the same spirit responsible for transforming humans into wolves. In 1989, the solution was for Ed and Lorraine Warren to bring Bill to the States, then performed an exorcism, turning the man back into his, you know, regular, less gravel self. Could there be a real wolf paw in the museum responsible for the werewolf of London case? Probably. Most likely. All signs point to yes. Number seven, the organ. Music is said to bring life into the room, but this time it's a bit too literal. Just a bit. There's an organ in the occult museum that belonged to Ed and Lorraine Warren for a while after they found it in, of course, a haunted house. Authorities cleaned it out and reached out to Ed to see what he wanted to do with such a thing. And after a few nights, he heard the organ start to play by itself. Dum dum dum. So scary. In total, there were three incidents where Ed thought somebody had broke into the museum. He heard the organ being played, but by the time he arrived, the room was empty. Nothing had been touched. There were no visitors, of course, and the organ. Zoom just happened to stop. So scary. A priest came to bless the museum and the music eventually did stop. Before her passing, Lorraine Warren said to USA Today that the prayers do work in this museum and that they blind the evil, much like an electric fence does for a dog. Tony Spera, son-in-law of the late demonologists Ed and Lorraine Warren, he's now watching the museum full time and he doesn't ever intend to destroy or leave any of the items in the museum. He's gonna take care of those. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. You're literally doing the Lord's work. Number six, cursed brick. Perhaps one of the least terrifying items on this list is a brick from Borley Rectory, aka a brick from one of the most haunted houses in all of England. Lovely. We love that brick. This house was originally built back in 1862. It was built for the rector of Borley, but after a fire in 1939, it was never the same again. And then it was finally demolished in 1944. But before its final days, the Daily Mirror printed about this haunted house. Harry Price, a paranormal researcher at the time, reported sightings of a ghost nun or a ghost car that would happen to drive by, as well as footsteps and unexplained sounds on the property. Yeah, a little piece of the haunted home now sits in the Warren Occult Museum today. Just a nice, scary brick. Didn't know those were a thing. Number five, the wedding dress. Your wedding dress is supposed to remind you of the best day of your life. So what's this dress doing in the Warren's Occult Museum? What's the history behind this one? The dress, once it was on, would possess the owner and make them attack their significant other. While that part is made up for the Hollywood side of the story, the real dress supposedly belonged to the White Lady of Union Graveyard, Connecticut. The real dress comes from 2009, so it's pretty recent as far as hauntings go. Route 59 is also a hot spot when it comes to spotting the spirit of the White Lady. Yeah, she'll just appear on the road while you're driving and then scare the shit out of you. I can't even read a billboard while I drive, let alone spot a ghost. That's, that's crazy. The hand-eye coordination for that? No way. I'd miss all those ghosts. Number four, black magic dolls. Okay, before we get to that doll on our list, we have some honorable mentions who keep her company in the occult museum. We love that. Tony Spera believes there's a voodoo doll just casually sitting around in this museum. Yeah, there's a doll that looks like it would resemble somebody and historically, if you do this, add some dark magic, some voodoo to the mix, you can actually harm the person the doll is representing. I'm not sure who this is, but I hope they're okay. It does look like a comfortable situation in that glass case. Also, the glass case around the voodoo doll has me convinced more than anything. Thing. There's also a doll with no mouth in the museum. That's awesome. Bet she's, bet she's full of secrets behind that non-mouth. There's another doll that has markings on her face. She has big eyes, this time mouth included. We love those. Always able to talk back with the demonic voice. Then there's a silly clown looking doll. And by silly, I mean equally as haunting. Number three, the Annabelle doll. Yeah, we can't have a list on cursed objects in the Warren Museum and not mention the movie star herself, the Annabelle doll. Here she is, fabulous. Her appearance was made to look even more haunting in the movie, but I'd argue that the real doll and the real deal is much creepier. 
Yeah. The real life Raggedy Ann doll was accurately represented in the movies, says Tony Spera. See, back in the 70s, a nurse was given the Raggedy Ann doll from her mother. So these two nurses were living together in Hartford, Connecticut, and they both reported the doll moving around on its own. Things got serious when they discovered a piece of parchment paper that said, help me, written in crayon. That's terrifying. Then the doll began to move in front of their very eyes one morning during breakfast. Yeah, animal's arms just lifted onto the table and then they freaked out. They immediately called the psychic, and the psychic told the nurses that Annabelle was a spirit stuck in the doll. I grew up watching Chucky. I don't do dolls, okay? Haunted or not, hard pass. Any doll, no thank you. Even Buzz Lightyear, I'm like, nope. Number two. Music box. We had to include one of the creepiest elements of the Conjuring movie, the parent family music box. Here we go. Director James Wan wanted to use the music box in the first film because, well, like I said earlier, mirrors are creepy. They add for great suspense in movies, all that jazz. But also, this was a real haunted artifact that's in the real museum today, so it's not made up just for spooks. The music box part of the movie actually scared the out of me. Like I said, any mirror scene, I can't do it. I just eat my hoodie. I just hide in whatever I'm wearing. They always do it slow too, and it's always like the slow jack-in-the-box music. Is this real? This is all real, these poor girls. Specifically April, the youngest of the parent children, she found this antique in the house and she used it to communicate to another spirit named Rory. Yeah, just a spirit named Rory. He sounds friendly, Rory, nice. In the movie, this was a happy ending, but in real life, the Bathsheba Sherman curse was never resolved. Which leads us to our big bad, number one. Number one, the photograph of Bathsheba Sherman. You always see these UFO videos or ghost photos or footage, whatever. They're always filmed with a Blackberry curve. It's just absolute rubbish. It's nothing, it's just grainy. You can't tell what you're looking at. There's never clear evidence of anything nowadays at all. Until now. Yeah, we may just have a clear photo with the real witch, the real Bathsheba Sherman. The witch in the original Conjuring film. We have a picture of her. This is so scary. Do you want to see it? Let's look at it. Of course we're ending on this note, here we go. This photo is from the Perrin family farmhouse back when it was still the Arnold estate. This was 1885, so the witch was most likely in her 70s at this time. And this witch lived next door to the farm, and although we never really will find out, many believe she's the lady in the middle closest to the camera. Also the fact that she's wearing some sort of mask and she's standing by herself, all black. I'm getting witch vibes just from this one photo alone. I also feel like nobody wanted to stand next to a literal witch in a photo, so it's kind of obvious who's who in this one. I couldn't blame them. Imagine doing a silly one with Bathsheba Sherman. You're like, hey, bunny ears, don't curse me, awesome. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Terracotta Army. The Terracotta Army was discovered in China, and it is a massive piece of funerary art that is thought to be one of the most massive archaeological finds of modern times. It truly is incredible, and it's something that's been attracting tourists from all over the world since its discovery. But for those who did the discovering, well, things haven't really been going so well. In 1974, there were seven farmers who happened to stumble upon this huge discovery, and you would think that this would come with some kind of a reward, but instead things have been going terribly for the farmers. Soon after the discovery, the government claimed their farmland. After this, their homes were demolished in order to make way for the exhibition halls and gift shops that were to come. They didn't just get nothing for this discovery, they ended up losing because of it. This is exactly why many people believe that perhaps with the unearthing of this huge piece, they also dug up some sort of curse that was buried long ago. In our number 9 spot today, we have the water jug. Okay, state sales, they're weird places, there are weird things, there's some quirky items, but this has got to be one of the strangest on a whole bunch of different levels. It's a decorative drinking jug, but it's being held in a miniature cart that's being pulled by a porcelain donkey. I cannot make this item up, nor could I make up the fact that this kitschy item is also apparently haunted. The seller of this item spoke about how he grew up with the item around as it was always displayed at his grandmother's house and she always kept it full of water. This was all fine and dandy until after she passed away when he was taking care of the estate and he bumped into it. How was the jug filled with water when no one was there to fill it? He thought that perhaps it was just old leftover water and he just ignored it, but the same thing seemed to happen repeatedly. And it wasn't even like the water level was staying the same, it would increase seemingly all on its own. The seller decided that this was not an item that they wanted to hold on to and decided it would be 
best to pass on to someone who is ready to take on this very mysterious and very strange object. In our number 8 spot today we have the Destiny Ring. Rudolph Valentino was an incredibly famous silent film star before he passed away at the incredibly young age of just 31 years old. And there are many out there who believe his untimely death was caused by the Destiny Ring. This ring is one that he picked up from a California jeweler, but before purchasing it there were warnings of the stories which claimed the ring was cursed, but Rudolph decided to just go ahead with the purchase anyway. It is said after this ring came into his possession his luck really began to turn. The movies he starred in started to do poorly, some even flopping, and his career really began to struggle. From there he fell incredibly ill and when he passed away he was wearing this cursed ring. From there after his death his lover ended up receiving the ring, but once it was in her possession she too fell extremely ill and she decided to give the ring away. All the owners after that were reported to have died in strange ways or under mysterious circumstances, which has led the ring to now being placed in a bank vault all locked up so that it hopefully can never cause harm to anyone ever again. In our number 7 spot today we have the Bassano vase. The Bassano vase was cast from silver in the 15th century and was apparently a wedding present for a bride who lived in a small village in Napoli. On the wedding night however the bride was found dying on the floor with her hands wrapped around the vase. With her last breath she vowed to have her revenge and at this point it became unclear whether the vase was already cursed or perhaps if this may be what caused the curse in the first place. As time went on the vase was handed from person to person within her family and with each new owner came another mysterious death. Because of this the family decided to hide the vase away in some sort of a secret location and this worked for a while until the vase was unearthed once more in 1988. The vase also contained a piece of paper from the family that warned beware this vase brings death. Well of course whoever found the vase did not listen and instead they sold it once again. The first buyer who is said to have been a pharmacist owned the vase for three months before passing away under mysterious circumstances. Then there was a 37 year old surgeon who died after having the vase for two months. After this was the archaeologist who only made it three months with the vase in his possession and at this point you get where this is going. Right now we don't know exactly where the vase ended up but I'm just hoping it's somewhere deep underground or in space or something else far far away from us all. In our number 6 spot today we have the mask. This metal mask resembles the face of a monkey, it's definitely already a little strange looking, but the story behind it is even more interesting. According to the seller of this item they explained that they acquired the mask in Thailand, but not before they experienced a supernatural battle where a witch used spells to bind the spirit of a jinn to the mask trapping it. Since then the mask is said to be full of supernatural powers, some of which could bring benefits but it takes a whole pile of work. This mask is said to have the ability to fend off vampires as well as potentially bring riches to its owner, but it needs some things in return. The entity in the mask needs regular offerings of food and drink and it also requires the owner to meditate in front of it for 20 minutes 3 times a day talk about high maintenance. If a person refuses to do these things while in possession of the mask, it is said that a cruel fate awaits them. I mean, what do you expect when you anger an ancient spirit? In our number 5 spot today we have the cursed chest. The story of this cursed chest starts off with a horrible person named Jeremiah Graham, who is said to have been making preparations for his first born son. Part of these preparations was having a hand carved chest made, and the person he got to make this chest was a man who he had enslaved named Remus. When when Remus finished the chest, Jeremiah was not satisfied, so he began to harm Remus, who would unfortunately later pass away from his injuries. The other people who lived and worked in the home were rightfully horrified and angry about this situation, so they decided to sprinkle dried owl blood inside of the drawers, all while placing a curse on the chest. It is said that the curse brought tragedy to anyone who put their clothes inside of it, and apparently it is a curse that is working with a vengeance, as it is said that this chest and the curse are responsible for taking the lives of at least 16 people. In our number 4 spot today we have the goblet. This is an item that was found in a museum, but it was a museum of specifically haunted things so I feel like it still counts. This goblet is said to have been used for rituals of necromancy which poses a few questions for me personally. What did they put in it and presumably drink out of it? Holy water? Wine? Blood? 
all of the above? Who knows? Either way, here's the real kicker. This goblet was of course for sale on eBay because why not? And the seller was claiming that it has an amazing energy to it. Okay, what kind of energy? Well, they said that some find it strangely positive, but that many perceive it as negative and malignant. All right. Don't think I'll be bidding on that auction, to be honest. In our number three spot today, we have The Beds. Back in 1986, couple Deborah and Alan Tallman moved into a new home with their children in Wisconsin. The following year, they bought a second hand set of bunk beds for their children for $100, but as it would turn out, they bought much more than they had originally bargained for. When they brought the bunk beds into their home, they clearly must have brought something else along with it. It started when they began to see strange shapes in their home, and they would hear disembodied voices that despite how hard they tried, they could not find the source of. They found themselves fighting with clocks and radios that turned on and off by themselves. They would find furniture that had moved seemingly all by itself, and sometimes they'd even see an apparition of an old woman. In the end, they not only threw the beds in a landfill, but they also moved from the home just to be safe. As far as we know, the beds remained in the landfill, but who's to say for sure? In our number two spot today, we have the Belcourt Castle chairs. Belcourt Castle is located in Newport, Rhode Island, and it is a former summer cottage. Construction on the cottage started in 1891, with it being completed in 1894, and inside there is a ballroom. This ballroom is important because it is said that it holds a group of haunted chairs. People who have visited the castle have reported a ton of strange happenings regarding this specific set of chairs. The reports include things like feeling chills racing up and down their spines, or feeling a strange sensation in a shift of energy while standing near the chairs, and some people have even explained how they have been pushed out of the chairs by an invisible force. I feel like just hearing stories might be enough to explain the energy shift some people are feeling, but actually being pushed out of a chair by some sort of invisible force would be absolutely terrifying. In our number one spot today, we have doorknobs. To be honest, I wasn't expecting to ever hear about haunted doorknobs, but this might just be a thing that really does exist. These doorknobs were listed on eBay, and the seller explained that they were once the knobs seen on the doors at an asylum, which truly lands on the list of creepiest places in the world. Considering everything that is said to have gone on at places like these, it truly doesn't surprise me one bit. We're looking at you, lobotomies and other horrific mental health treatments of the past. These doorknobs must have quite literally opened the door to some terrifying things that I'm sure many of us would prefer to not even think about. According to the eBay listing, the asylum that they came from after it was abandoned is said to have had strange whispers, occurrences, and horrifying noises coming from it. This is all to say that maybe that trip to Home Depot is better than buying antique just this one time. Number 10. Dybbuk Box In Jewish folklore, a Dybbuk is an evil spirit. Supposedly someone accidentally summoned the demon while using a homemade Ouija board, but managed to trap it inside the wine cabinet. The Dybbuk box came to light in 2001 when Kevin Manis purchased it and started having terrible nightmares. He then decided to gift the cabinet to his mother, who suffered a stroke the very day she received it. Not just this, but every person who ever owned that wine cabinet has reported experiencing horrible events. The last owner of the cabinet, Jason Haxton, found out the box possesses a spirit of a malicious Jewish creature called a Dybbuk, who has the ability to haunt and possess the living. Jason not only had nightmares, but also developed a strange skin disease and began coughing up blood. At that point, Jason contacted his local rabbis and sealed the Dybbuk back in the box. Jason later, wanting nothing to do with the box, gave the cabinet to Zach to display it in his museum. You actually may have heard of this box before, because in 2018, fans of rapper Post Malone claimed that his spat of bad luck was caused by his contact with the cabinet. Number 9. Charles Manson's Cremated Ashes Charles Manson was a criminal who created a cult called the Manson Family. It was active in California in the late 1960s and early 1970s. Now the group consisted of approximately 100 followers who had lived an unconventional lifestyle and frequently used psychoactive substances. Now the members of the cult believed that he was Jesus Christ and followed everything he did. Now some members committed a series of nine deaths at four locations in July and August of 1969. In 1971, Manson was convicted of first degree homicide and conspiracy to commit homicide for the deaths of seven people, including the film actress Sharon Tate. When Charles Manson died, his body was cremated, and some of his followers actually took fragments of his 
ashes to keep as a memento. This led to such creations as the Ryan Almighty blood paintings of Manson, in which the eyes were filled in with Charles's own cremains. Painted in Ryan's own blood, the artistry has to be appreciated, but the morbidness of the painting with the cremated ashes included makes for a unique piece to say the least. This very painting is on display at the museum along with other Charles Manson memorabilia, including a prison worn outfit, Manson's own TV, and even more ashes in a display case along with Manson's dentures. Number 8. Love Ranch Bed Zach acquired the bed and bedroom furniture of Bunny Ranch and Love Ranch owner Dennis Hoff, which eerily includes the mattress Dennis died on. Dennis died in that room of a heart attack on October 16, 2018. He was 72 years old. Now this just so happens to be the same mattress Lamar Odom was on when he overdosed 3 years prior in October 2015. Safe to say a lot of bad things have happened on that mattress. Zach says they never swapped out the mattress in the Love Ranch room and now folks at the legal Nevada brothel believe it's cursed. Zach said that he was told that the bed was cursed so of course he wanted to add it to his collection. Number 7. Dr. Jack Kevorkian's Van Jack Kevorkian publicly championed a terminal patient's right to die by physician assisted suicide embodied in his quote, dying is not a crime. It said that he assisted at least 130 patients in ending their lives. For this he was convicted of homicide in 1999 and was often portrayed in the media with the name of Dr. Death. Jack who died in 2011 lived out of a van for periods of his life and used it to carry out some of his crimes. Zach found this van and paid $32,500 for the rusty 1968 Volkswagen van which has been parked in storage at the American Jewelry and Loan Pawn Shop on 8 Mile in Detroit. Now it sits at his museum for all to see. Number 6. Demon House Staircase From a very intriguing standalone documentary of the same name, The Demon House was an investigation undertaken by Zach and the team at a home in Indiana where the family claimed that numerous members of the family had been possessed by a spirit. The local police department and even social services within the local area were convinced that the house was some way haunted. From footsteps in the corridor to full on body possession, the demon house creeped Zach and the team out more than anything we've witnessed on the show before. Now Zach actually purchased the home for himself for investigations back in 2014 and used it to film the documentary before bulldozing it entirely in 2016, taking pieces of it, including the staircase, back to the haunted museum. Number 5. The House Itself The mansion housing the museum has reportedly been haunted for years. It was built in 1938 and owned by businessman Cyril S. Wenger and rumor has it, dark rituals took place in the basement in the 1970s. There was a pentagram found in the basement and this is where supposedly a young boy was sacrificed. It is some kind of satanic altar supposedly to invoke the spirits down there and it's an extremely evil place in the house. During the tour they try to usher people through the basement as quickly as possible because it's so scary. Now the mansion at one point was turned into a law firm where strange occurrences continued before the place was purchased by Zach and was eventually converted into Zach Bagans the Haunted Museum. Number 4. Bella Lugosi Mirror Hollywood star and Dracula actor Bella Lugosi is one of the world's most famous horror actors but did you know that he once owned a mirror believed to be haunted? It is reported that he was obsessed with practicing a form of clairvoyance which would involve him staring into inanimate objects to try and conjure messages from spirits. One such object reportedly used by the actor for such practice was a mirror which hung in Bella's Hollywood Hills home. Zach was given the mirror by the niece of lawyer and B-movie producer Frank Saltry who formerly lived in the home once owned by Bella. However, Frank tragically died at the home in 1982 and following his death the producer's family inherited the mirror. Soon after bringing the mirror home though, the family began to notice that paranormal activity began to occur in their own home. Believing Bella's own practices and her uncle's death to have affected the mirror, she later took the object to paranormal investigator Zach. After taking the mirror from Frank's niece, the star also encountered his own paranormal experiences around the mirror when he investigated his own museum for a 2017 episode of Ghost Adventures. This included seeing a ball of light that appeared on the opposite wall of the mirror, which Zach said traveled across the room and went inside the mirror. Now that sounds extremely haunted to me. Number 3. Ed Jean Cauldron Ed Jean ended the lives of people and was a grave robber. He created costumes, furniture, and other keepsakes from the bodies of his victims. A police raid on his house turned up masks literally made from human faces, a belt of nipples, and a corset created from a skin torso. To be clear, he never wore these costumes when ending people's lives. Instead, he donned them in the 
privacy of his home. Now, some masks appeared to be mummified, almost dried out, while others were more carefully preserved. A few had lipstick applied and looked more lifelike, and four had been stuffed with paper and hung on the wall of his bedroom, almost like hunting trophies. Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Buffalo Bill from The Silence of the Lambs, and Norman Bates were all based on Ed. Zach paid $2,800 at an auction to take possession of the 25 gallon cauldron Ed used to discard his victim's entrails when he gutted them. The thing had been sitting in a Wisconsin woman's home, used as a flower pot ever since Ed's 1984 death in prison. When she died, her son wisely believed the cauldron was cursed and wanted it gone, so now it's Zach's. Number 2. Peggy the Doll Warning, looking into this doll's eyes can cause you to have health issues or even get haunted. Please watch at your own risk. Now, Peggy the Doll is a three foot tall doll that has a blonde hair bob with glassy blue eyes and is considered to be the most haunted and dangerous doll in the world. After being purchased at a car boot sale, the owner began having nightmares and felt as though she was being haunted by the doll. She contacted Jane Harris, a paranormal and haunted doll investigator, and eventually sent the doll to her. Jane and her team of psychics began working with the doll, running experiments, or having paranormal sessions with it, and began posting photos and videos of the doll online. That is when she began to receive comments from people who had seen the video, and immediately after viewing, began to have chest pain, nausea, and or crippling headaches. So yes, she can haunt you through a screen. Jane has come to the conclusion that the doll is possessed by the spirit of a woman who was born in 1946 who died of a chest related condition like asthma. Now, Peggy's picture alone is said to cause anxiety, heart attacks, and headaches. Now, Peggy is treated with extreme respect in the museum. She has her own room and a spirit box, which is linked up to the room so guests can interact with her if they wish. Many guests have received very strange feedback through the spirit box, including being called out by name and conscious replies to certain questions asked on her guided tours. Now, looking up information about Peggy was absolutely terrifying, and Peggy, if I accidentally looked into your eyes, I am so Sorry. And coming in at number one is the devil's chair. Ed and Lorraine Warren helped exercise a possessed boy named David Glatzel in the early 80s. They did many exorcisms on David, and Lorraine said that David levitated, ceased breathing for a time, and even demonstrated the supernatural ability of precognition. During his exorcisms, there was also a rocking chair in the room that would allegedly rock on its own, levitate, and even vanish and reappear. David and Lorraine also claimed to have seen the devil sitting in it. Now, Zach purchased the chair to be on display in his museum, but he had been forced to shut down his haunted rocking chair exhibit. Why? Well, Zach and his friend noticed the door to the chair's room slowly creaked open all by itself. Zach also says a light focused on the chair went out when a power cord was mysteriously yanked out of the wall. Two hours later, he said a woman collapsed, began bawling, and asked, what is happening to me? Shortly thereafter, she fell unconscious, according to Zach, who adds that the woman was upstairs directly above the rocking chair exhibit. Bit. Later, Zach said five of his tour guides throughout the museum started crying uncontrollably. After just a few tours on opening night, the stress was too much for Zach and it forced him to shut it down altogether for the night. For now, Zach says the haunted rocking chair exhibit is closed until further notice. But in the middle of 2022, YouTubers Sam and Colby, who are paranormal investigators that I love, by the way, were given special permission to not only see or touch the chair, but to sit on it. The results were insane, and let me just say, they are braver than me because wow. <laughs> Number 10 spot, we have Musée de Horreur Octopus Men. <laughs> That's my French accent for ya. It failed. <laughs> this is a poster that honestly gave me the creeps to look at, which is my sign for the fact that <coughs> it's cursed. This is a replica of a French poster from 1899. This poster is of a man that is seemingly half man, half octopus. The man is also wearing an eye patch and looks quite stern. So overall, the vibe of this picture is just low. Not to mention, it's literally called the Museum of Horrors. So that just sets the tone for you to be scared. Words are powerful, folks. In our number nine spot, we have the Jeffrey Dahmer Blade. This is one of the most chilling items that I found. This is a kitchen cooking blade that has the face of known killer Jeffrey Dahmer. 
Why does this product even exist? I don't understand people. Jeffrey Dahmer is known for being a cannibal, and so this product just pushes the envelope a little too much for me. Upon inspecting the item, I noticed that six people bought it, and 45 people are watching the item. Who are these six people and 45 watchers? I demand a reason for buying this item. Unless it is for Halloween purposes. Actually, no. Even still, this is too dark. Imagine the headspace you have to be in to even think of this item. I'm scared, let's move on. In our number eight spot, we have the angry baby face. Maybe it's because I'm creeping up on my motherhood years, or maybe it's because this is genuinely, supremely creepy. I'm really unsure, but would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. This is an angry baby face mask. Actually, it's a collection of baby face masks with an angry version, a crying version, and a happy version. And all of them are quite disturbing. I think the happy version is the most nerve wracking, to be honest. The baby looks like Gollum when he finally has the ring in his hands. I think the eyes are possibly the worst part. So big and grayish blue. I'm concerned that 48 people bought this, but whatever. In our number seven spot, we have the pig mask. Has anyone ever seen the show Black Mirror? And the first episode is with the politician and the pig. Yep, quite the disturbing show and not gonna lie, ever since that episode, I've had a hard time with pigs. Actually, that's a lie. I just have never liked pigs that much, if I'm being honest. <laughs> the only pig that I ever loved was from the movie Babe. Okay, fine, and the one from Charlotte's Web. Anyways, this is a mask of an angry pig. Guys, did you know that pigs sometimes eat their babies? Pigs are scary, okay? This mask gives me the creeps and it's absolutely cursed. 43 people have bought this item. Correction, 43 sociopaths have bought this item. In our number six spot, we have the family heirloom. This is a ring that is pretty creepy to look at. It's quite old and worn out and is supposedly an heirloom to the Borgia family, a prominent Italian family. This heirloom is a piece that dates back to the 1600s. It is also a piece of jewelry that is said to be haunted as it was a part of an Ed and Lorraine case at one point in its history and the case dealt with a lot of suffering. The ring is made of gold and the stones have not been identified. I've never seen a stone like it. It almost looks otherworldly. The ring has a set price of, wait for it, 3,000 US dollars. A lot of money to spend on a possession that is definitely cursed. In our number five spot, we have Aladdin's lamp. This item is probably cursed, but also it's really cool, so I'm conflicted as to how I feel about it. I was a hardcore Aladdin fan, not gonna lie, and I have to admit, Aladdin was definitely my first crush. <laughs> He's a dreamer who does what he can to make his dreams happen, so gotta love that in a man. Anyways, this lamp speaks to me. Does that mean whatever is haunting it is speaking to me? Does that mean I'm already being tricked? Anyways, very confusing. The seller of this lamp claims it to be haunted as well as that it possesses powers. It's also really dirty. Not sure if this seller decided to leave it dirty so that it looks like it came straight out of the desert of Agrabah, but I just, I don't understand. Like, why couldn't you have wiped it down? Like, even a little. My cleaning OCD is acting up, so let's move on. In our number four spot today, we have a haunted ring. The title of this product is literally Haunted Ring, so do we think it's cursed? I'm leaning towards yes. <laughs> This might be the spookiest ring that I have ever seen. It has a brassy look to it with what looks like a bird at the top, then honestly what looks like stitching or maybe a tally of something underneath, and then the letters R-O-M and some more stitching or tallying of something. It's so strange. Upon further investigation, apparently there is supposed to be an A at the end of the R-O-M, meaning it's supposed to spell out Roma, and apparently this is a ring that was made for a man for his wife named Roma, who was a survivor of World War II. Dark. Honestly, if this was a gesture of love, couldn't he have just written, I love you? Some men need guidance. 
In our number three spot, we have the clown painting. This is a painting of a clown that literally looks like it's looking into your soul. <laughs> Or perhaps it's looking into your ear and getting ready to pull a coin out of it. But regardless, I'm scared. It's cursed. There's clearly a spirit attached to this painting. This painting is from the 60s, and I truly wonder who in the world bought this painting back then. Also, I want to know where in the house this painting would be hung if bought, because I don't think there is a room that it would not be creepy in. Unless you had a room of clown merch, then perhaps it wouldn't be as creepy. It would just add to the collective creep vibe, but still. If you have a happy clown story and are convinced you can make me less scared of clowns, please share it with me in the comment section below. In our number two spot, we have this old Ouija board. This one might be a given as it's literally a tool to talk to the dead, but whatever, I had to put it on the list because it's clearly cursed and we should definitely stay away from this item. This is a very old version of the board that has probably passed through the hands of many in its time and it is so dark and spooky looking that it just gives me the creeps. When people play Ouija, they could be talking to good or bad spirits and they say that the bad ones can actually attach to you if you're not careful. I truly wish this game came with a list of player stories so people could be aware of how psychologically damaging it can be. I had a very dark experience with this game, so definitely stay away and do not buy it. In our number one spot, we have the Illuminati New World Order card game. Okay, I had to put this one in first because it's honestly intense. This is a card game that was invented in 1994 by an artist named Steve Jackson. This isn't just any card game though, oh no. This is a card game that has predicted a lot of crazy events that have happened in world history. There's too many predictions to count at this point, but the very fact that it was invented in 1994 and there is literally a card with two buildings and one exploding, similar to a certain attack that happened in 2001 in New York City, is mind blowing. This deck is called the Illuminati New World Order, which makes you wonder, was this a prophetic game? Or was this quite possibly made by an insider that was subtly warning the world of what is to come? In any case, this item is definitely cursed as the cards keep coming true, so beware. In our number 10 spot, we have the Donald Trump mask. It's probably cursed because along with how funny it is, it's also terrifying. Imagine seeing someone wear this walk by you. If they had, you know, a similar build to him and they wore like a turtleneck, then I would probs think it was him. The extremely orange face with the white eyes is too much. Too funny and terrifying at the same time. In our number 9 spot, we have a zombie mug. Merch like this makes me terrified, but also so excited. This mug is super creepy though and most definitely cursed. This is a mug that when heated, a zombie appears in the cup with blood on its hands. The zombie's face is quite chilling that it actually feels like there's some kind of spirit attached to it. Anyone else? The zombie is also like pretty bloody too, no thanks. Definitely stay away from this product unless you like dealing with dark spirits then by all means go for it. In our number eight spot, we have the faceless carving. This is an item of a mother and daughter hugging that's a carving made of willow tree. The only thing is the mother and daughter do not have faces. Look, I love my mom. She's one of my best friends and I love cheesy lovey-dovey products to show that you love someone, but this isn't the one. <laughs> I don't know, man. Seeing this, I got the instant creeps and I personally think this item might be haunted. There's so much detail in the figurine. Why leave the faces blank? From what I've gathered, there are a lot of items similar to this made from a brand called Willow Tree. And honestly, I think their intention seems to be to make some sort of comforting merch. At least that's what they say in their marketing. But personally, there's something spooky about these figurines without faces. Faceless items just feel too horror movie for me. Quite possibly haunted and therefore cursed. In our number seven spot, we have the creepy pen holder. Okay, so this item is just creepy. It's a pen holder with a little red man figurine lying on the floor and the hole where you put your pen in is right in its heart. Who the heck thought of this? 
What was their thought process? Who were they imagining this guy to be? And why don't they have better friends to say, hey man, maybe don't make such a low vibe product. The world is low vibe enough these days. This item is not cursed in your typical ghostly way, but it definitely is just low vibes to begin with. So anyone who buys it is sure to continue the low vibe train and sit in a bit of a crappy headspace. In our number six spot, we have the LED mask. Look, I'm conflicted. On one hand, this is kind of cool to look at at first, if you're into LEDs. On the other, it's very creepy, and also it can't be good to wear LEDs so close to your face, can it? I don't know. I don't know much about electricity and lights, but something makes me nervous about wearing lights on my face. And I'm concerned that no one even asked the seller about that. The mask itself is also the face of something out of a nightmare, so there's also that. I could see a John Wayne Gacy of this time using this mask while plotting his next kill, and that just gives me the shivers, not gonna lie. With its creepiness and the fact that it's probably not very safe to wear LEDs on your face, at least for long, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this product may curse you with some kind of low vibe situation in your future if bought. In our number five spot, we have a kitty salt and pepper holder. Look, I'm a cat and dog person. I love them both. I sway a little more on the dog side, but whatever, they tend to give you more love. Anyways, my point is that I love all cat and dog merch, but this, this is terrifying. This is a cat salt and pepper shaker that could have been made cute and adorable, but it looks like it it may possess you. First off, the cat is dark gray with shades of black. Could they have not made him white or orange or give him a cute yellow collar? Anyways, it's really the face that's terrifying. Couldn't they have modeled the face off of the cat from Shrek? It's so cute with the big eyes. No, they made the cat look like it will probably eat you while you're sleeping. In our number four spot, we have the toilet mug. I'm throwing this one on the list because it's clearly cursed to make you want to throw up every time you have your morning cup of tea. This is a toilet tea mug. I can't, just why? If you are someone watching this and you have bought this item, please, please explain in the comment section below. It's just so beyond gross. It's definitely a funny gift, but also a waste because it's so gross that I just can't imagine anyone drinking from it and not feeling like they must now run to the real toilet. <laughs> Anyways, if anything, I want to argue that it's cursed with not being used much and definitely will make people feel ill. In our number three spot, we have the Let's Summon Demons shirt. Let's not. <laughs> Maybe let's go outside and play in the grass under the sun or make chalk drawings on the pavement or beat Pokemon Gold again like it's 2002 and do everything but summon demons, okay? <laughs> Why is there a shirt that is encouraging people to summon demons? Clearly the creator that made it was being possessed by demons himself or herself, and the demons gathered together to plan how they can possess more people, and alas, came upon the plan of encouraging people to summon them through a t-shirt with cute humans holding hands while standing on a giant pentagram. In our number two spot, we have a satanic ring. Whether you're religious or not, I'm sure you can look at this product and feel uneasy. It's a gold-plated stainless steel ring that has a devil skeleton with a cross on its forehead. It's extremely dark. Anything to do with the devil just makes me uneasy, but honestly, there's nothing about this product that feels positive. Even as a Halloween ring, I feel like it's just too much. The vibe around it is quite low, and I'm pretty convinced that anyone that buys it will be doomed to feeling low while wearing it. Could be just me, but I believe that we should be careful with what we put on us as objects carry energy, and even if you got someone to cleanse an object, something like this, you'll always know that its maker had low vibe intention when creating it, so therefore, it could always possibly be low vibes. In our number one spot, we have the Furby doll. Guys, stay away from this doll. I had to put this in first because I had so many creepy situations that happened with this doll that I'm convinced it's possessed. Also, 
it's not just me. Literally, this was trending a few years ago where people told their possessed Furby doll experiences, and I instantly felt more creeped out as that totally confirmed my own experiences. Literally, I would be talking to my mom, and the doll would say something that would be in response to what we were talking about. Or it would just, you know, make noise or blink when the battery wasn't in it. I'm telling ya, this item is not to be played with. If you have a haunted Furby story, oh my gosh, please share in the comment section below. We want to hear it. Number 10, Pompeii Artifacts. Once a flourishing Roman city located near the Bay of Naples in Italy, that was of course until 79 AD. That's when Mount Vesuvius erupted and it buried the entire city and sadly all of its inhabitants under layers of ash and pumice. Now the eruption was so powerful that it wiped out not just life within the general vicinity, but all life within a 16 mile radius. Yeah, it makes you think about Yellowstone National Park a bit, doesn't it? I'm like, oh, that's, that's close. Earth this scary. I don't know. Pompeii remained buried and forgotten for almost 1700 years. That is until it was rediscovered in 1748. Now today Pompeii is an archaeological site that offers a glimpse into ancient Roman life with of course well-preserved ruins of homes, public buildings, streets, artwork, restaurants. They even opened a recent restaurant there. I don't know. It's a fun time now. And there's a great amount of people who steal from this ancient landmark. Yeah, how to get cursed 101. Here's how you do it folks. Steal from Pompeii. Why would you? Okay, tourists would come and steal fragments of monuments, literally pieces of the city. They would just pocket it and then dip. Yeah, I'll just put this ballista ball on my fireplace. That looks lovely. For sure not cursed, right? A hundred packages a year end up getting sent back to the archaeological superintendents in Pompeii. Most of them accompanied with a letter explaining the bad luck that occurred. They're like, sorry we took this brick. My grandmother died. That sucks, I feel bad. Let's move on. Number nine, portrait of Bernardo de Galvez. Art is subjective, but I never knew it was haunted. My gosh, here we go. Bernardo de Galvez was a nobleman and military leader who played a significant role in the American Revolution. Widely regarded as a hero for his efforts to aid the American colonies in their fight against British rule. Some believe that there is a curse attached to his portrait. Yeah, haunted portrait, that's terrifying. According to legend, anybody who looks directly into the eyes of Bernardo's portrait will suffer a terrible, terrible fate. The curse was born during the Spanish-American War when American soldiers looted Galvez's home in Louisiana. They took his portrait as a trophy. Again, how to get cursed 101. Here's how you do it. Since then, several people who have come into possession of the portrait or stared deep into the portrait's eyes all have experienced misfortune in some way or another. One man inherited the portrait from his grandfather and then hung it in his home. Not long after, he lost his job and then his wife left him. Maybe he's just bad taste in art, I don't know. Another tale involved a museum curator who displayed the painting and then soon after suffered a heart attack. Now, even those who have seen photographs of the portrait, they claim to feel uneasy or experience strange occurrences. I should have led with that. Whoops, my bad. Number eight, James Dean's car. James Dean's love for fast cars was of course well known and sadly because one of them took his life. One ultimately led to his tragic death at the age of 24 and some are convinced that his cars were cursed. All these vehicles are the reason for it. Dean's first vehicle was actually a Triumph Tiger. It was a T110 motorcycle and it was involved in an accident that left him with a broken leg. Rough start. It gets worse. His next car, a Porsche 550 Spider, is the one that he famously died in right after colliding head on with another vehicle. I don't know if that one was cursed, but we should look into that maybe. That's already tragic. That's dark history right there. But after Dean's death, the Porsche was sold off and then quickly became infamous for causing more accidents and deaths. One of its owners even reported seeing James Dean's ghost sitting in the passenger seat shortly before crashing. That's so jarring. I couldn't imagine, I'd be like, ah, ah, ah. I don't even know where to start with that. That's two bad things happening. Then the car disappeared from the public view in the late 1960s and has since been rumored to be hidden away by collectors who also believe it to be cursed. Yeah, fair, keep that away locked up. I don't even care where that is. I just looked directly into that light twice now. Three, three times, I gotta stop, ah. Another Porsche that he owned was destroyed when it caught fire while being transported on a trailer. And a third Porsche that he had ordered, well, never even made it to him. It was involved in an accident during transport that killed that driver. Whether you believe in curses or not, there's no denying that, you know, this car collection has some dark, tragic history, some sort of bad juju going on. I don't know. That's why I don't have my G1 personally. That's why I don't drive, so I don't know. Number seven, the Dybbuk box. 
box. This small wine cabinet got some attention after being sold on eBay in 2003. Remember eBay? What a good time. So sketchy. The box was purchased by Kevin Manis. Now, shortly after, he claimed that said box was haunted and it caused him and his family to experience a series of terrifying events. A series. More than one. Health problems, terrifying events, even paranormal activity. They all saw ghosts. It's uncomfortable. He eventually sold the box to Jason Haxton, who ended up writing a book about his experience. He's like, yeah, sure, take it. 20 bucks, I don't care. Yeah, it was that bad. He wrote a book. Some believe that opening the box can release malevolent spirits into the world. Its origins go back to a survivor, a woman from World War II, and this came from her estate, apparently. So the history behind it is dark. It's seen some days, that's for sure. And now lives in the haunted museum. Remember that viral video of Post Malone touching that haunted artifact? That was this box, there we go. Zach Baggins, please keep an eye on this box. Thank you so much. Smash that thumbs up for ghost proof glass. We love that stuff, that's great. Number six, the Bassano vase. Also known as the vase of death, that's a good one. Legend has it that this vase was crafted in Italy during the 15th century and was once owned by a powerful noble family. That's how it all starts, right? Then the curse comes. However, there it is, however, tragedy struck when several members of the family died under mysterious circumstances. Now at that point, curse confirmed, right? Absolutely. The curse of the Bassano vase is said to cause anyone who possesses it to suffer from physical or mental afflictions. Sometimes both, and sometimes even bringing death. Despite its reputation as a cursed object, some are fascinated. They want this vase, or vase, I'm not really sure yet, but they want it in their home for some reason. They want to crack the code, they want to break the curse, right? A pharmacist, an archaeologist, both of these owners died shortly after receiving the vase, so I don't know what to believe anymore. The Italian police, apparently they buried it in a lead box somewhere else there so that's great I mean it's gonna suck when we find it in 600 years but for now we're okay number five Thomas Busby's chair a haunted chair who would have thought that's like haunted mansion stuff legend has it this chair was cursed by a vengeful witch who had been wronged by one of the members of the Busby family back in the 1800s yeah she cursed a chair now it slides out by itself it's terrifying it's like, like what happened I don't know 400 years ago. The curse was said to bring misery and misfortune to anyone who dared sit in the chair, so if you're around it, well, you better lock those knees up. Or squat, we're doing some squats all day in this bar. Over the years, many brave souls attempted to break the curse by, of course, sitting in it, only to be met with tragedy soon after. I'll be honest, I would probably sit on it. Yeah, I'd have a few pints, I'd get cocky, for sure, I'd do it. Some suffered from unexplained illnesses while others were plagued by nightmares. One man even claimed that he saw ghostly apparitions floating around him after sitting in the chair. Yeah, he saw ghosts. That's how bad the backrest is. Despite its reputation, the Thomas Busby chair remained an object of fascination for many paranormal enthusiasts. Again, people want the vase, people want the chair, they just want to be around it. It was eventually acquired by the Thirsk Museum dedicated to supernatural artifacts where it remains on display to this day. If you want to go and take a seat for a minute, there you go, good luck. Number four, the Anguished Man. I mean, first of all, aside from its dark history, the Anguished Man painting, who would be able to look at this? Imagine this on your wall in your home. That's from The Conjuring. No way, that's terrifying to look at. The Anguished Man is a painting with grim history, as all of these are. It's said to be haunted by the spirit of some artist, an unnamed artist, who created it. An artist who created this using their own blood into the paint as they worked. Yeah, a real artsy fella. Love doing that. Love mixing my own blood into my art. What? The painting has been passed down through generations of the artist's family, but each owner has reported strange occurrences while in possession, brief possession, of this haunting piece. Some have claimed to hear whispers and moaning coming from the painting late at night, which that's the scariest thing I could possibly imagine. Imagine your painting being like, uh, huh? Who is that? What's going on? I just heard a, uh, from my painting. While others have actually seen ghostly apparitions out and about, not just, you know, moaning in the walls. Yeah, like Super Mario 64, just a live painting. That's terrifying. Would you spend the night with this painting? Comment down below. I'm a skeptic when it comes to all this stuff, but I don't know. I don't think I would do this, honestly. It's a bit too... Bit too brave for me. Scariest painting ever, let's move on. Number three, Robert the Doll. First of all, Robert, that's not a scary doll name. We've gotta rework that. Annabelle, nice. Chucky, even better. Robert, back to the workshop, my guy. Go figure something out. Let's talk about him, what did he do? A man named Rob Otto, he was given a doll that looked, uh, well, a lot like him. He noticed right off the bat. He's like, uh, oh, okay. Nice eyes, hazel, wonderful. One of his servants who didn't like him made this doll. Yeah, you already know where I'm going here by what I'm saying. You're like, oh, okay, this was a voodoo doll for sure. This is obviously a trap. Neighbors would hear Robert talking to this doll. Robert and Robert, the podcast, tune in, there we go. 
just talking to himself all day. Now after Robert's death, sad, I know, the new owners of the house found that same doll up in the attic, still there, still chilling out, still doing the podcast alone. Well, actually their daughter found it. It must have been pretty jarring. The family was haunted by this doll. They would hear threats coming from it, so now, Robert the doll is on display in a museum in Key West. Another haunted museum. That's terrifying. Robert, he seems too innocent, you know? Number two, Elmo. This guy, not so innocent. This guy's done some stuff. I had like eight Elmos growing up. I loved them. None of them talked to me. None of them knew my name. Thank God, that's a little personal. The Sesame Street icon has been in homes for many, many years. There was a literal stampede when Tickle Me Elmo was released. An employee was trampled. People go nuts for these little red guys. When the Elmo Knows Your Name toy was launched by Fisher Price in 2005, Five, that was game changing, right? This guy's intimate. Now he's learning things. There were 15,000 names ready to go. Only one family was traumatized. Only one. Not bad. The Elmo toy apparently spoke on its own, threatening to harm the family in the Elmo voice, which is half hilarious, half terrifying. So they tossed it out immediately. But this happened more than once. The audio sounded off for some of these devices. Be like Elmo sounded like beat up Elmo. The Elmo phone released in 2009 often said 456, but in some cases it sounded like who wants to have, mm, right? Six and sex, it's, you know, they sound kind of similar, I guess. Very different things. We're all learning with Elmo, whether you like it or not. We're just learning some uh, intimate topics. I like touching this today. I've been doing this a lot. This is cool. I feel like I'm at a museum. I'm like, hey, what's this? It can be whatever you want. It's a green screen. Number one, the great bed of wear. All right, we'll get nice and cozy for our last one here, and then we'll put it to rest. We'll put it to bed. Just not in this one, that's for sure. The great bed of wear, it's massive, it's cozy, it looks like a bed a king would certainly sleep in, and rightfully so. You know, it's, it's it, yeah, sure. I wouldn't, I'm not a king, but yeah, go get itchy. The great bed of wear was built for the royal family back in 1463. It was 12 feet by 12 feet. Plenty of space to cut your toenails and get all dirty like a king would. Jonas Fosbrook was a carpenter from that time and they impressed the king, which was King Edward IV at the time, with his work. So much so that the king gave him a pension for the rest of his life. Yeah, you're set, there you go, you're laughing, you're rolling in it. People would travel all across the land to see this beautiful bed. Now, what a fun family vacation. Yeah, we're not going to Disneyland, we're going to the great bed of wear. Sorry, I don't know, I got laid off. All those who stayed in the bed did not have a good night's rest. No, instead they woke up scratched and bruised, or they would wake up on the floor. Somehow they would roll out of a 12 foot bed, right? Unless you're lanky and 6'2 like me, I don't know how that's possible, it's crazy. Today it can be found in the Victoria and Albert Museum. Would you stay the night in this old haunted, dirty, and probably bug infested, uncomfortable bed? Sound off below, I probably would, I don't know. I would starfish the whole time and be like, yeah, I can, whatever. And ghosts, nice, rest and a show, we're good to go. Mm -hmm.